Do we have any Muhammadan would like to join us? Anything, guys, you want to say? Oh, yeah. Um, have you seen that video of Mimi Hijab where he says the Quran itself is dangerous? The Quran is what? Dangerous, according to Muhammad Hijab. The Quran only Muslims. I mean, I don't know what this guy he say. He's a stupid anyway. But uh, the dangerous, uh, I mean, uh, any, anything can be dangerous, but the, the, the dangerous is not the Quran itself. The Quran is just a stupid book. The dangerous is the one who read the Quran. You know, what, I didn't the, it. there is two things need to gather together. A Quran and a stupid person, that would become dangerous. Quran alone is not dangerous, you know. So you bring a stupid person plus the Quran. Now we have fire. <laughs> it's like matches you know you bring you give you give a matches to a kid then you set the house in fire otherwise matches is not going to set the house in fire so the Quran is it can be a comedy book it can be like a, a, a the 1000 night and night stories uh, something silly and stupid you know the flying carpet and uh, you know the guy who lost his penis and the guy who a chop it and the guy who was going to have a virgins and the guy who found the sunset in murky water and the guy who have a flying carpet and it is army 3500 miles so the quran can be a great book of entertainment for the one who want to love but you give the quran for a stupid person you will have hamas you will have hezbollah nice yeah just give it to the idiot and then that book will become dangerous. Otherwise, the Quran by itself is funny and stupid. Are we coming fine in YouTube, guys, and uh, in Rumble? Let us see what's going on in Rumble in YouTube. Let's do to be sure that everything is coming right. Everything is good. Don't forget to invite your friends, and if you are Muslim, you know, you can invite your four wives and your 60 kids. All right, that's good, that's good. And let's see if we are in Rumble, yeah. We are in Rumble too. Okay. Do we have any Mohammedan? Yeah, Osama bin Laden, he have 60 brothers. <laughs> you know, they keep marrying women after women. They change women the same as they change bicycles. Sometimes when they get rich, they do one of two things. Either they commit a crime or they marry a new wife. He got rich, that's it. You know, he is not going to behave. This is why Muslim women, they do their best to keep their husbands poor. I remember my mom, she asked our neighbor, she said to her, well, you know, you, you know, she saw her like taking furniture out and she said, but you just bought, you know, bought those couches and nice couches, expensive ones, just a few months ago. She said, oh, they have cigarette on them, holes in them, etc. Said, mama, she said, you know, you should not let the kids do that. How you know? She said, you don't understand. I do that on purpose. Because if my husband, he was able to save money, the first thing he would do, he would go and marry a new wife. So what she do, she keep breaking furniture, destroying the curtains, the couches, the mirror is broke, etc. You know, your son did that, your daughter did this. So she tries to suck his blood as much as she can. And in the same time, in the process, she saved money in her pocket. She she hide money from him. She don't tell him the exact cost. So this way, she can be guaranteed. And this is the only way she can guarantee that he will not marry a second wife. As soon as he make money, enough for him to buy a new wife, he will go to the supermarket and he buy a muta woman. This why always... Muslim women, they spend a lot of money uh, and they do it on purpose. Because this is the only way 
unless he is very rich and those things will not do much so then then they will start asking for something expensive like jewelries she want diamonds she want uh, gold she want etc you know uh, 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 she lure him to buy things for her so because this is her security and she don't even keep them home like he buy her gold he buy her diamonds she go and hide them in her family houses because you never know maybe tomorrow he will be angry from her and he will take them so she will take it, she will take it, uh, give it to her families, and this is the only way they can guarantee their futures. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to join us? Any Muslim? Anyone? You know, remember, the Muhammad, he made the rule clear. The woman, she can lie to her husband. The husband, he can lie to his wife. And that, you, that can tell you why the family is totally destroyed. If I can lie to my wife legally, and I don't feel guilty, and the wife, she can lie to me legally, she don't feel guilty. So how, what you expect, the, the word trust is not exist in the Muslim society because the core of the society is the family and if the family is where the lies start to the point the husband and the wife they cannot be honest with each other so where is the honesty can be found which location How and where? Hi, CP. God bless you, and you're doing a wonderful job. God Thank bless you in Christ. Thank you, brother. Any Muslim? Any Muhammadan? You know, when Jesus said, the father of all lies is Satan. And then we see, like those Muslims, Lili Dawa and Mimi Hijab, making videos about, yes, he can lie to you. He ha why not? Why he cannot lie to you? The husband, he can lie to you. You don't even need to tell you he marry a new wife. If this is the core of the society, that means the mother of Lili Dawa, she lie always to the father of Lili Dawa. The wife of Lili Dawa, she lie always to Lili Dawa. Same as the rest of them. So what kind of family? And then why you expect them to be truthful when they debate you? If those people, they lie to each other, Any Muhammadan? Uh, apparently, Abu Mashtal in the sage, he's a Muhammadan that wants to be unmuted. Uh, that's what he said in the chat. Uh, this guy in A? Oh, okay, I did not notice. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Abu Mashkal. Uh, thank you for uh, unmuting me at the conference. <laughs> And I have to really, I have to correct you. I was, I was an Abdul. I don't have anything to do with Israel religion. So you left, uh, you left, you left Islam now. Yeah, yeah, Prince, Prince, Prince. I already talked to you before. So oh, I already okay. told you why. What was the reason for that? But um, I am here because of something different. If you don't mind. All right. Um, you talked about the Musaf of Umar bin Affan, right? Uh huh. Let's claim this uh, Musaf is true, but it still contradicts Sahih al Bukhari 3806 because Muhammad said the Muslims should take the recitation of Quran from four persons and no one of them yeah. mentioned Uthman. Yeah. 
I cannot <laughs> understand how yeah. they have the audacity to claim that the Quran is not corrupted. Obviously, it is cor it is corrupted. Yeah. Uh, Muhammad, he said, take the Quran from four, Khud al Quran and Arba. Uh, yes, uh, Abdullah ibn Masood, Ubaid ibn Ka, Salim, and there was another guy, but I forgot his name. Yeah. But then, the, the Muslim they did not take it from them. So, what he is saying, well, if this is what Muhammad command, that you take the Quran from those, so where is the Quran from those? However, for me, you see, when I debate Muslims, I don't talk about the Quran is being corrupted. I believe it's not for my benefit. Uh, it's better for me that the Muslim agree the Quran never corrupted, so we can love more. The thing is, if you uh, <laughs> if you had use uh, this argument, you would destroy the more to be honest. Uh, you know, like for, uh, as I said, I think I think no. But I will tell you why. I remember once I was debating a Muslim, and they start saying to me, "Well, we know that any verse I show him, how stupid it is." He said, "Well, obviously this is somebody put the Quran, they put this there. This is not from Allah. Allah don't say that." So now they have a new trick, and the trick is we escape. Allah is saying that, and we claim the Quran we have today is corrupt, but Islam is true. So it's better for me to make it easier to agree that the Quran never changed, and then we show him how stupid it is, and then what he can do about it. Uh, Muslims are very sneaky, you know, people, and uh, uh, usually, if a some if a person he have a decency, he will leave Islam like you. But the one who have no decency, he always sneak around. So you take him left, he go right. You take him right, he go left. You say to him, Quran is not corrupt, right? And then when he find there is no solution except to say Quran is corrupt, if this is will save Islam, he will say, yes, Quran is corrupt. But that is not really what destroy Islam because as you see, it's corrupt. Allah did not say that. No? No, can okay. I... I understand. Yeah. I understand. I understand your point. Yeah, so it's it, honestly, it's easier. It's easier to debate someone who believe Quran never changed because then he is out of excuses. Like when I show him all those stupid mistakes in the Quran, forget about this hadith. Let us say this hadith does not exist. But the Quran itself is is a is a disaster. So I do not need the hadith, you know. I can use the hadith, let us say, to explain something in the Quran. Uh, this one, as you said, uh, is, is just explain how Muhammad, he command the Quran to be collected. And as long the Muslim did not follow the command of Muhammad, obviously, the Quran they have today is not valid. However, who said that the Quran, the Muslim they have today, is the Quran of Muhammad? Nobody. You see, when this is stupid Uthman, he, uh, he accepted the challenge to bring Quran of Uthman. Our Christian brother, he is originally from Pakistan. He made a challenge, five thousand dollars, if you can show me the Quran of Uthman. This idiot, he come back, and he decided to show him the Quran of Uthman. Then, when he come back, the same book he have in his hand, it says the following, and this is page one twenty three. It says, it is obvious that. It is, imp it is not possible to say that the Cairo Mus'haf, which means the one is exists in Cairo right now, was one of the Mus'haf attributed to Caliph Uthman. It is not possible. The stupid idiot, he come and he, he challenged the Christians. He says, yeah, I have the book. Look, I have it here. This is the book of Uthman. No, it is, it is a 1924 version of Egypt. That's, yeah. It is impossible to take even that something in the past. But this is showing you how stupid they are. I mean, didn't this guy, but he don't, he don't know how to read. I mean, we understand that he claimed to be a sheikh, but he don't know Arabic. But the book in the front of him is in English. So why he could not read 
that it says, I mean, he came to challenge the Christian. He says, you said, you will give $5,000. You are a liar. Here we go. This is the book of Uthman. It's in the front of me. It's here. It's in my hand. Give me the money. You're a liar. I got you busted. And then the same book he had between his hand, it says, it is impossible that this book is the book of Uthman. It is impossible. It cannot be possible. This is how stupid the Mohammedan are. They don't read. Nobody read. They are like their prophet, illiterate. All right. Anything else? Martin, my last question. Uh, you claimed it was uh, it was a debate or a discussion with with uh, Abul, and uh, you said that the true and uh, the real father of Muhammad was Waraka bin Nawfal. Uh -huh. um, I know who was Waraka um, bin Nawfal. He was a unit price priest, as far as I know. But do you have any sources or information that um, claims your, um, let's say, your piece? If you read my, if you read, if you read my book, you will see a really strong connection between Waraka and Muhammad. As an example. Uh, when when uh, when Muhammad tried to commit suicide, when he tried to do that, um, beg your pardon, I couldn't answer your question. Okay, do you know the hadith about Muhammad trying to commit suicide? Yes, yes, it's uh, Al Bukhari. To be honest, there are a few uh, yes. Muslims uh, who claim that the chain of narration will be correct about those hadiths. They can say whatever they want. This is their books, anyway. I mean, they can claim whatever they claim, but this is their books. They are the one who brought this history. They bring the garbage to us, and then by when they deliver it to our home, they say, "Oh, this is our garbage." <laughs> and Mr. CP, to be honest, they reject everything. Yeah. Forget the hadith. They even uh, don't accept uh, muta or that there was another. Yeah, but the the, 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 the point the is, the point is. If you read my book, you will find that the uh, uh, according to Muslims, Waraka ibn Nawfal's sister, she offered the father of Muhammad 100 camel to sleep with her. And he agreed. And then he's supposed to come back to her. He was in his way to go to Amina, and Amina supposedly is the mother of Muhammad. So he went and he came back, and when she found out that he did it, he slept with her, she refused to sleep with him. I believe strongly that the story, obviously, there's a, you know some fabrication. I mean, a hundred camel at that time is like offering a billion dollar. I mean, those, if you have a camel, you are rich. If you have two camels, you are wealthy. If you have five camels, you are really doing great. Uh, so a hundred camel to sleep with her. So... That proved that Muhammad's father was a gigolo, gigolo. He got paid for sex, according to Muslim stories. Same time, I, like a gold I believe that uh, Waraka, you see, in the in the, the Arab, they used to have something called Zawaj al Rahat. Zawaj al Rahat means the marriage of a group. A woman, she will marry many husbands. When she have a child, she was going to give birth. She chose who is going to be the father. And obviously, uh, Amina, uh, the, the, the mother of Muhammad, if she is the mother of Muhammad, uh, she had many husbands, not one. There's many proof of that. Muhammad was born four years after his father's death. Muhammad's uh, father and his father, they get married in the same day. And, 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 Muhammad, and Muhammad supposedly died a few months after his marriage. So how Muhammad was born four years after 
based on the reference even the timelines yeah even the timeline is not correct yeah, uh, you know we, we can say the, now, the, now the Muslim they will say this is a wrong history it's not correct but you notice here anything you bring to the Muslim they say this is wrong it is uh, you know mistake uh, you know this is like the age of Aisha uh, you know what she was if you do correct study you will find that she was 18 right so that, that's a lie. There's no yeah yeah but 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 uh, but, this, uh, but the point is the point is anything is embarrassing it is wrong it is not true it is uh, wrong uh, information if it is not embarrassing then it is authentic it is true uh, it is uh, you know uh, amazing you know the second it is stupid the same second the source will become not authentic like when Muhammad yes, says, that's why I... yeah when when the Quran says I mean this is Quran he found the sun set in murky water the Muslim they do their best to say it appearance he thought uh, it looked like but the, 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 the you know the verse is so clear he found the sin, the one is talking is not even the guy, it is Allah. He found the sun sit in a murky water. He found where the sun set to. And here in the translation, look what they add. Look at the fabrication. It says, it appeared to him that it was sitting in a dark through, through be the sea. <laughs> you see? If you copy, here we go, the Arabic text is next to it. You can copy each word one by one and you will not find anywhere the word appear to him. Torpid C, the word C does not even exist. It says in Arabic, spring. So this is why we say Islam without lies dies. You change the translator, this is the translation of who? Muhammad uh, Assad. Let us go to a different person. Uh, and your translation, translation, Christian Prince. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah. Well, we, you know, I, I'm working it. I hope soon I will be able to finish it. Uh, because yeah, we need a translation. This is big tile, right? This is big tile, Yeah. It says here, till when he reached the sitting place of the sun. He found it sitting in muddy spring. Where is the sea? Where is Torbid sea? Where is the word appear? You see, if the word appear is exist, it should be exist in every translation because this is a word you cannot ignore. Same time, what is what it mean appear to him? I mean, this is even is more stupid. Allah is telling us what, what happened with this guy. And then he said he, he reached the sitting place of the sun. Where is that? <laughs> there is a place where the sun set. Obviously, yes, there is a place where the sun set, according to the Quran. He found the sun setting in a boiling spring, not muddy spring. See the word hamia mean boiling, not muddy. Uh, and then Muhammad himself, he explained the verse. This hadith is absolutely sahih in chain, which means there's no doubt all the men in it are trustworthy and nothing wrong with it. I was sitting behind Messenger of Allah who was drinking, riding, sorry, a donkey. While the sun was setting, he, he asked, do you know where this set? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. He said it's set in a spring of boiling water, not wa warm. Hamia is boiling, blazing boiling, not only, by, you know. So like, if you go the word Hamia and you type it in the Quran, you will find that this is the word, describe the hell in Islam. So how that is just warm. I mean, they don't even know how to translate a single, a simple Arabic word. Type the word Hamia you will find that this is a description of the hell. Chapter 88, verse number 4, chapter 101, verse 11. Do you see what Hamiya mean? Blazing fire. 
extremely hot, not warm. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. CP, yeah. sorry that I interrupt you. Uh, the word Hamia, um, does this word have uh, more meanings or only one meaning in Arabic? Hamia always, for sure, you know, any word in any language, if you change the location, you know, like I can say uh, word Hami for a man, you know, he is like he was excited, etc. But when we speak about material, we are because a man he have a like there's a limit of how hot he can be, right? So uh, if I'm speaking about hell, then I know how hot it is. And when I speak about the spring of the water, obviously, this is a water which is Hami, which obviously water can reach the, 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 the point of boiling. So Hamia is not warm. Warm in Arabic is Dafi. Dafi. Hamia, as you see, this is what Hamia is. So yes, the world can change yes. depending on the location, but when you describe material, it is about something extremely, extremely hot. All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, you know, the first time you showed me this verse, I I tried to research um, what the Muslim objections are, and they don't even make sense. They try to say that it oh it just appeared. They have hamia. What it what it means, like in the um, Quran. It means that the earth is flat itself because the sun, the setting point, can only be um, going into the water only at the edge. You know, there's an idiot, his name is Fifi. Fifi, he made many videos to refute Christian Prince. And Fifi don't dare to debate me because he's a potato kid. Fifi, in his video, if you remember, when he made a video to, ref to refute apostate prophet, he quoted the hadith, and I will show you the hadith exactly, the one he quoted. So he wanted to refute apostate prophet. So he decided to quote this. And he said, yes, the prophet refuted you. And this is an accurate hadith. And this is the correct one. But let us read together how Fifi gave a screwdriver to Muhammad in his bomb. The Prophet asked me at the sunset, do you know where the sun goes? Between two brackets at the time of the sunset. Remember here carefully, Muhammad he claimed that the sun is going. That alone proved Muhammad to be a fraud. I replied, Allah and his apostle knows best. The sentence here de de defeat the claim of Muhammad and that they are monotheist. Why? Because they associate the knowledge of God with the knowledge of Muhammad. So now Muhammad and Allah knows best. And there's no way, imagine I say, or you say to me, Christian Prince and Allah knows best. That means that mean you made me equal to Allah. For sure I am not, he is the devil, and he knew more. He said, it goes, I eat rubble. So the stupid Muhammad again confirmed that the sun is moving during the sunset. Till it prostrate itself under the throne of Allah, and take permission to rise again. And it's permitted, and then a time will come, when it's about to prostrate itself, and its protestation will not be accepted, and will be and will ask for permission to go in its course. See, this is the course. The sun goes every day, bow down under the throne of Allah, ask Allah for permission, and then Allah He gave the sun permission. The sun go back to us. Until one day, Allah will refuse to give the sun permission, and He will command the sun instead of go and appear where it came from from the east is going to command it to go back from the west and this is Muhammad he explained and then it says will not be permitted 
but it will be ordered to return whence it came, and, uh, and, and so it will rise from the west. And that is the interpretation of the statement of Allah. And the sun runs into fixed course for a term. So Muhammad, obviously, and this is the Quran, proven to us that he is a fraud, a liar, and he believed that the sun set every day because the sun goes and go under the throne of Allah. Now here you notice something. It says under the throne of Allah. But the Quran says the sun set in murky water. Correct? Correct. So how we can make a connection? Where is the water? We go to different hadith. We will find in different hadith where is the throne of Allah. The throne of Allah is above the water. And now we understand where the sun is going. I'm glad that microphone have a mute bum. Otherwise, I sneeze like a man, like an elephant. <laughs> I was going to make you deaf, all of you. So look at this. So now you need to connect between the sun set in murky water and the, under the throne of Allah. So now the other hadith says what? The sun goes under the throne of Allah. Where is the throne of Allah? Is in the top of the water. Do you see it? Yeah. So now we have a clear image of what Muhammad is talking about. And by the way, here it says God recorded fates of a creatures 50,000 years before he created them. In different hadith Muhammad, he says 50 years. <laughs> There's only a little mistake. <laughs> Three zeros only. <laughs> oh boy. Do we have any Muhammadan? Well, I'm glad for you, A, that you left Islam, my friend. And I hope you will be able to make more Muslims leave Islam yourself. You are, you are doing work, Christian Prince. I appreciate it. Thank you for that. You're welcome. And um, I will leave now so that any of you can come. Uh, but I want to say finally is um, now I'm reading the Bible. And my goal is at least in the end of the year to make a decision about Christianity. But if I read um, the Bible, and compared to the uh, to Quran or Hadith, then I'm surely convinced that Christianity or let uh, Christianity uh, this, uh, on the side of uh, Jesus Christ must be the truth. Yeah, I mean to that, and we hope soon you will find your way, and you will decide to accept Christ and become saved, my brother. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a All good right. day, Mr. CP. All right. We will pray for you. Take care. Do we have any Muhammad that would like to join us in Discord? Anyone? So the Muhammad and they have no Quran, yet they claim the Quran is preserved. The Muhammad and they claim that the Quran, in the time of Muhammad, as an example, the chapter of uh, Al-Ahzab used to be equal to the chapter of the cow. And we give you the link. Anyone save the link? How many of you saved the link, which I posted just 15 minutes ago? Anyone that posted it? Saved it? Christian Prince, can we defend our, the, ourselves if somebody attack us? Why not? You know? If somebody attack me, I will make him shish kebab. <laughs> I will send him free shipping and handling to Allah. A Christian, a Christian, you see many people, they have a false interpretation of the of Jesus' teaching. Is it Jesus said, the one who don't have a sword, go and buy one? Huh? Why are they both swords? Is it Peter, he have a sword? Isn't it Peter, he cut the ear of the of the soldier? 
But Jesus did not want him to do that because this is a soldier. He is a policeman coming to arrest Jesus. The sword was to resist the criminals, not the policeman. So, for us as a Christians, we not only we approve arming ourselves, we should arm ourselves. However, we will not approve being a criminals. So you don't buy a gun to shoot a policeman. That will not make you a good person. No way. Remember a policeman, if he come in to arrest you, he is just doing his job. He don't know you. There's nothing personal. But if a criminal is coming to your house and he want to hurt you, your family, your children, you have all the right to defend yourself in all means you can. In fact, the Christian who don't do that is no Christian. Some people, they say the sword of Jesus was the Bible. That is very funny. So, so uh, Peter, he cut the ear of the, the soldier by, by the Bible? <laughs> I mean, people say stupid things, my friend. I, I don't, don't, people say, who say? Who is the dummy who says that? The sword of the Bible now? Hmm. Anyone who say that having weapon and etc. is not right is a false Christian. Because actually, having those is part of necessity because society has evils. And if we don't stand against evil, evil will take over. If there is a 20 people are gang, just 20, in a city have 2 millions. 2 millions, not, you know, imagine 20 versus 2 millions. And all the two millions believe that they cannot resist and they cannot fight the evil ones. The 20, they will control the two millions. Because they can kill. And the, 20, the two millions, they cannot. So all these stupid ones who have such an idea, this is not what Christianity teach. Old Testament is our book too. Isn't it God? He says, you go to the field and I will be with you. So don't mix things up, you know, like now we are fighting the cult of Muhammad with the Bible, yes, not by the sword, but there's time for peace and time for war, the Bible says. In the time for peace, you use the word of God. In the time for war, you have to use weapon. Because only weapon can fight weapon. Do we have any Muhammadan here? Like me myself, I have I have a little piece everywhere in my house, like here. I have one here. Do you know what the sound is? I will make a little sound. The one who have pieces knows what is that. So if you don't have one, who is going to protect you when somebody comes to you and he's a criminal? I will call the police. By the time the police is here, I will be dead. And then the police will take a picture of me and they will put it in a file and they will say, this guy, he was shot by somebody in the head. Nice to meet you. Hmm? So if somebody come to hurt me, I will be able, easy, to teach him a lesson until the police come over. And then they can take care. <clears throat> Do we have any Muhammadan? Yeah, yeah, I have one everywhere. Small one, big ones, Magnum 500. <laughs> There's, you know, like every party have a have a have its own music. <laughs> You know? Yeah. 
You have to be ready for the party because you never know when the party started. You know? <clears throat> Do we have any Muhammadan? Christian Prince, I, I had to I have to go, but I wanted to tell you I'm so glad that Christ has allowed us to talk and convince me out of this demonic religion. I, I, I pray for you uh, and I ask God to send his blessings to you. May God Thank bless you. you, Christian. Thank you, okay. So you were a Muslim before? Yeah, I talked with you and then you showed uh, me the Zulkarni. Uh, uh, okay. I, you know, as I, I apologize, you know, I forget who I talk to, you know, it's very hard to remember, you know. All right, okay. All right. Well, uh, I'm happy that you decide to leave Islam, and uh, but I, in the same time, I feel sad for you. You will not get versions. Can you get me the versions as long as you are leaving Islam? Now, what you will do? I mean, I mean, what you will do now? Just give me the versions, and you go, you know. Do you have them there? Like, you know, can you send me like, I, I will take 70, forget about 72. Okay, you know what? 50, 50. Don't think about it. No? All right. <laughs> All right. I have a Christ that I will meet, which All right, is brother. far better and far, far huh? bigger than any 72 versions one huh? can be promised. Good words to say. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I don't know. I was trying to get the... I mean, if you're not using them, you know, let me at least, you know... You know, I like to be a part-time Muslim, you know, muta from time to time. Convert at night. You know, wake up in the morning and repent. <laughs> a hypocrisy life. Yeah, I mean, brother, if you convert to Islam, you know, this God will make your penis endless. Don't you like being penis endless? You know? You know, there is a beauty queen. Uh, uh, they do like this, uh, you know, uh, it's kind of prostitution, actually. Uh, but imagine if they make competition for the longest penis. Who's going to win? The Muslims. Endless, endless, brother, endless penis. But then the problem is, how many one of them would win? Because all of them, their penis would be English. So imagine like a billion Muslim, they go in the stage and they are the winner. Why? Because they have English penis. Okay, well, as long as we have English penis. Muhammad, he says, Anyone have the link? Who have the link to post it? Let us see how many of you are saving reference. Who have the link for the authentic hadith about the endless penis? You remember the caller, the one who left Islam? The guys, you see those those Christians? They are saying Christian prince is getting old. He don't remember the he don't remember the ones who made them leave Islam. <laughs> no, no, it's not because I'm old. No, I'm still sixteen. Uh, but because it's too many to remember. How am I going to remember all those who left Islam? There's thousands of people leave Islam after talking to me or listening to me. How am I going to know? It's impossible. You know? Okay, you don't believe me. Let me swear by the shin of Allah, I am 16. Okay, not convincing? Okay, I will swear by the fig. I mean, this is serious now. Seriously, I can't. I mean, you can tell that I'm getting really upset now. I swear by the, by the fig. Do you know how serious it is to swear by the fig and the olive? An apricot? An onion? And banana? Do you know the song that says, I swear? We should have changed the words of this song. I swear by the fig and the olive, I swear. I swear. I know, man. <clears throat> My voice is not good these days, so I better not to sing, otherwise you guys will run away. 
Do we have any Muhammadan here? I never heard of God, he swear by fig. Obviously, Muhammad was pregnant and he is wishing to eat some food. You know, when women, they are going to deliver a baby soon, they start having desire for a certain food. Hmm. Any Muhammadan? Don't forget to subscribe to our Patreon so you can be updated when we will go live. Because as you see, uh, you will not be informed unless you are subscribing. It's for free anyway. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to join us? We are in Discord if you like to call me in Discord. Yeah, uh, uh, we, we, we were like live and then we cancel it and we start again. This is why you did not uh, get notification because I did not post yet. Because I went first in Rumble only and then I start again in Rumble and YouTube. Do we have any Muhammadan? So, you know, as you see, the sun goes every day under the throne of Allah. And this is how Islam and the Quran explain the movement of the earth around itself. So the foolish Muhammad, who Muslim, they keep talking about scientific Quran. You remember when Lili Awa, he says, it is clear that the scientific miracle of the Quran is debunked. Yes, brother. I did not make a mistake. Let me make it repeat again. The scientific miracle of the Quran is debunked. <laughs> and the funny he said, he is a Kurdish and he is uh, born of a Muslim family and yet he claimed that he converted to Islam. I mean, look, look, at the, look at the fraud. How you are born of a Muslim family and you claim that you converted to Islam. But anyway, he says, even though me, myself, I converted because of scientific miracle of the Quran. So he converted for a false reason, false, false reason, according to him. Any Muhammadan? We have a guy in the in YouTube, his name is Dawa. Hey Dawa, why you don't call us? Somebody in the chat asking you, Dawa, why you don't explain to us the chapter of noon? Huh? Do you want to explain to him noon? Is it true that noon is a whale carrying the earth in the top of its back? It is really astonishing how Allah he knew this. Seriously. You know, if you want to study geography, biology, astrology, whatever, whatever liji, you know, you go to the Quran, brother. Oh, not what we want. Give me a second. Noon wal qalam wa ma yasturun. Oh Allah, he was able to know that. I mean, this website is really stupid. You type the word exactly as it is, it still doesn't come. Huh. 
All right. Chapter 68, verse number 1. By the pen which they write, and then noon before it. What is noon? And the Muslim can tell us what is noon. Noon! Chapter 68, verse number 1. Shall we go and check it out? Any Muslim? Any Muslim would like to join us and explain to us. Uh, we closed the website of uh, Harun Yahya with all the girls. Beautiful, beautiful. 68, verse number 1. Here is where you find the knowledge of Allah. From the narration, his narration and the authority of Ibn Abbas, he said, regarding interpretation of Allah saying noon, he say Allah swear by noon, which is the wheel that carries the earth on its back while in the water. You know what? I never thought that the wheel one day will be out of the water. Hmm. I mean, the Muslims are very good in details. Look, look, look. This whale is in the water. Mm. How? How they knew that if this is not from God? How they knew that the earth is in the top of the whale? Huh? And beneath, which is the bowl. And under the bowl is the rock. And under the rock is the dust. And none knows what is under the dust of Allah. Brother Peter, according to Ibn Abbas, upon him, he said that noon is Allah swear by noon, and noon is a whale in the water, and then the water is in the of the bowl, and then the bowl there is dust, and then the dust is the rock, and the rock is big. I wouldn't know how big, brother. It can be very big, it can be very small, but it's very, very big rock. However, if you think the people that say rock and roll, this is a different story. We are not talking about rock and roll music. Because now we are talking about real rock. This is not metaphorical. This is the real rock. So, it's under the rock and no one knows what under the rock and the dust of Allah. What the heck is that? This is, All the science is in one place. And the name, look, the Muslim, they knew even the name of the way. <laughs> I mean, everybody have a name. The name of the whale is Lewish. Where I met this Lewish, where I met, is that Lewish for a con? Hmm. Not sure, not sure. But I met this name before. And it said that its name Lotaya, if, if, if. And the name of the ball is Bahamut. And some they say the name is Talahut. Or Leona, and the whale is in the sea called Edward, and it's like a small ball in a huge sea, Hollywood rock, whereby there's 4,000 cracks. <laughs> you Muslims are taking a lot of cracks. Let us be honest here. <laughs> Who is a Muslim here when I join us with the knowledge of Allah? And look, are we done? No. And the free, from each crack, water is spring out <laughs> to the earth. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Just to show you the stupidity, how the cracks is under the rock. In the top of the rock, there is a bowl. In the top of the bowl, there is a wheel. In the top of the wheel, there's an earth. How the spring is coming out in the earth? Are you with me? <laughs> look, look. The spring is in the under the rock, under the dust. In the top of the rock, there's a ball. In the top of the ball, there's a whale. In the top of the, of the whale, there's the earth. <laughs> How the spring is connected to the earth. 
Do you think they have a tube? Any Mohammedan? And now, like, do we understand what the verse is saying? No. Look, it says here, and also say it, like, what the heck? All of this explanation for the same noon? Not noon is one of the names of the Lord. Allah, His name is noon. Noon is a, is a whale. It stands for the letter noon in the in the word Rahman. <laughs> and it's also said that noon is an equal, like a second ago, noon was Allah. A second after noon is an equal. Who can beat the scholars of Islam? And this is Ibn Abbas who Muhammad said. He is the only one, he named him, the only one can explain the Quran. And Muhammad, he prayed to Allah to make Ibn Abbas the ink of knowledge for Muslims. So this is the best man they have to explain the Quran. So now, noon is Allah, and then noon became an inkwell. Allah, he swear by the pen. Allah swear by the pen, this pen made of light. If the light, if the pen is made of light, why he need inkwell? <laughs> <laughs> so the the pen is made by, from light but need ink are you sure hmm. that's too much knowledge strong strong knowledge i'm really convinced and then made of light its height is equal to the distance between the earth, the heaven and the earth, brother. <laughs> Look how long this pen is. <laughs> is that the rainbow? Muslims, why the why the pen of Allah is so big? Side does matter, isn't it? Right. I mean, Allah is Akbar. His pen have to be big. Allah cannot write with a small pen. <laughs> oh boy. Do we have any Muhammad that would like to join us? Listen, Muhammad, if you feel ashamed of what we show you on the screen, just take some Advil and call me. You know? Or eat uh, two dish of, uh, you know, uh, Tharid, the the Muhammad, he have a favorite dish. It's called Tharid, and that is Aisha. Mm. Now, are we done with the interpretation? No. It is with the spin, the wise remem remembrance, i.e., the guarded tablet. Allah have a tablet. You see, everything you see around you called so-called technology is coming from Allah the first one who have a tablet in history is not galaxy from Samsung is not the stupid apples it's Allah he have a tablet in heaven brother and the tablet Allah he put it between the eyes of the angel Israfil I asked the teacher when I was a kid sir why he put it between the eyes of the angel he said, you idiot. So he cannot read it. Man, I was there. I said, so I said to him, but he can do that if there's a mirror. He said, don't, don't, don't ask me a question. No one, don't ask me a question no more. <laughs> I mean, guys, the angel, now he cannot read the tablet. Allah, he put the tablet between his two eyebrows. How he can read it? Impossible. But you can go to the water reflection, you can go to the mirror. I mean, there's a billion way to read it. <laughs> uh, 
And the teacher, he said, and, and you know, when I put my hand up to ask question, not you again. No, 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 don't ask, don't ask. No, 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 I'm not listening. He put his fingers in his ears. I'm not listening. Okay, did you finish? I'm not listening. <laughs> he is not listening. And I assure you, even when he put his fingers in his ears, he can hear me. But he's ignoring the question because they can't answer it. Oh boy. And then we are not done. It's always it, it's also said there's also the pen is the one of the angels. What the heck? It turned dude, it turned to be the pen is an angel. The pen is an angel. Who can beat that? Can you? Hmm? That pen is one of the angels by whom Allah sworn, and that which they ride therewith. So Allah, He hold the angel from his ass. He squeeze his ass, the ink will come out. <laughs> Point, point. Yeah, <clears throat> Allah, do you want to write anything? Hey, Angel, okay, flip upside down, okay? Your head down. Yeah, yeah, put your ass, uh, ass up. Because this is how I can write. Yeah, your mouth will be down. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, I will squeeze your stomach now so the ink will come out, okay? Uh, let us start writing. What the heck? Do we still have the Dawa guy in the chat? Who is a Muslim would like to join us? They block all my account. Well, we only block people who they are just kids and they shout and they scream and they curse and they say bad language, so you must be one of them. Otherwise, if you are a Muslim coming to debate us, we will never block you. We block only filthy, bad language people, people who want to just uh, uh, repeat themselves, never answer anything. Everybody know that. I have patience to talk to Muslims for hours. If I have patience to talk to Nader Ahmed, well, I will not talk to you, but at least Nader Ahmed, he don't say the F word. But even with that, sometimes I have to give up on him and hang up on him. Do we have any Muhammadan? Any Muhammadan would like to join us? May they, may they. We show them their books, they get ashamed of it. We show them the Quran, they run away from it. We show them the Hadith, they spit at it. All what we show them is from their books. And they are ashamed of what they have in their books. This is why you see, and the numbers of those who say we are Quran only is increasing. But Quran only is a stupid only. Quran and Hadith is a stupid and idiot. So you think you saved yourself from being a stupid, you are not. Quran only is the same stupid thing. Any Muhammadan? Ramadan is the best holiday ever. Yeah, it's the month where rape increase, theft, robbery, violent, heart attack. Go right now and search. And don't search in a Christian website. Search only Muslim news. 
why heart attack increase in the month of Ramadan do you see how helpful Ramadan is search why violence increase in Ramadan Muslim they will answer you brother and sister because in Ramadan we are fasting and we became very nervous and then we cannot really handle anyone in the big dot and then we get violence so violence terrorism rape killing cheating food prices increase skyrocketing because all Muslims they cheat each other they take advantage and people go bankruptcy because most of people they are you know and because they have a tradition now you know so like you invite me to your house I invite you but all of this is very costly by the end of the month every single Muslim family is bankrupt Do we have any Muhammadan? Not to forget to mention that Ramadan is nothing but a month of the pagan Sabian. You see, if you go and read the Quran, you will see how laughable the Quran is. <clears throat> the Muslim, they say to you, the month of Ramadan. That is a lie. Ramadan is not a month. Ramadan is a moon. The word shahar is used today in Arabic as a word mean moon. Sorry, a, a, a month. That's true. But when the Quran is written, the word shahar is moon. Shahar is not even an Arabic word. It's in Aramaic and Hebrew. You can go right now, check in Hebrew. What the word shahar mean? You will see it is the crescent moon. That's why here it says, whoever of you sight the crescent moon. If you read carefully what the Muslim they say to you in the translation, you will laugh. The month of Ramadan is which was revealed the Quran, a guidance for mankind, and clear proof of guidance, and the certation of the right or wrong. Whoever of you present, how you can present in a month? How that work? It doesn't say that. It says, whoever of you, I cite it, witness, I cite it. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمْ الشَّهْرُ Whoever of you, I cite it. That's why the Muslim, they look for the moon to start the month of Ramadan. And they look for the new moon to end the month of Ramadan. So the translation is a fabrication. There is no month. It is the moon. Whoever of you sight the crescent moon. You sight the crescent moon. You sight it. You have to sight it. All what you see here is a fabrication. Change the translator. Another Abdul. <clears throat> All of this is a fabrication translation. Different translation. We will keep changing until we find one of them have little decency. Let us see Yusuf Ali or Big Tal. All of this is false. Whoever of you present, what present, how you can present in the month. That is a stupid to say. Let us see Shakir. Whoever of you present, that's again false. Let us see Yusuf Ali. Whoever of you present, that's again false. 
none of them saying the word sight, which is the Quran saying in Arabic clearly. Let us see uh, Sahih International. <clears throat> so whoever of you sight the new moon, do you see guys what happened? How many translation I changed in order to find one little bit honest? How come the rest they did not say the same? One after one they say present, present, present. What present? How you can be present? All of us we knew the Muslim they wait for the moon and have to be the new moon. Why the new moon? Because the Sabi and believe that there is a 12 moons and those moons have houses and they move from house to house. One of those moons is called Ramadan and that is the month which or the moon which they are waiting for to start the fasting and then they go to different city at the end of the month to welcome the new moon in the new house. If you go in the Quran, different verse. The Muslim always translate. I mean, this is this is, the website is really making me sick, but I like it because they put things together, close together, so we can read both. All right. The Quran says the year for Allah. Oh, sorry. The the uh, uh, the numbers of moons for Allah is a twelve moon, not a twelve mo twelve month. Because the word shahr is a word mean moon. Now we understand what Ramadan is about. Go ahead, Al Mahdi. Shalom, Salam. How are you? I'm fine. Can you hear me well? Your name Al Mahdi, and you are saying Shalom. Am I not Benny Israel? You are from Mahdi from Benny Israel. How that work? <clears throat> you think Muhammad is an Arab? You think my grandfather is an Arab? Muhammad is your grandfather? He is my adopted grandfather. Muhammad has no sons, no daughters. Fatima is my grandmother. Fatima comes from Khadija. From who? Khadija, his wife. I never heard of this name before. Khadija? Oh, so now you're going to mock someone that does not speak stupid Arabic tongue. Because you're an Arabic a man, and you think you are wise. But Let me ask you a question, since you want to try to debate using stupidity and but, ignorance. But you are saying foul -mouth you are tongue. saying you are the grandson of someone. You don't know how to say the name of your grandmother. How long ago did my grandmother live? What was your grandmother? It, it doesn't what was matter. The name of your grandmother? You, you Let can, me ask you, Christian uh, Prince. This, this let me ask you, do you know the name of your grandmother? One thousand five hundred years ago. Oh, what hold is on. Your name? Doesn't matter. No, you want to act like a smart man. I, you think you're intelligent. <laughs> you want to act like yeah, a yeah, dummy. I, I know. I, I, I know the You want to debate the Muslim? Listen. You want to debate our brothers you are, and use foul language? What Come debate with me. I ask you a question. What foul Since language? You think you what, what, about what, what foul language? What, what is the <laughs> meaning? Uh, 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 what is the meaning that Allah takes up no sons? Why is that written in the Quran? What Do you know the meaning? The meaning of what? Allah takes up no sons. What is the meaning of your interpretation? In the Quran? You, think, you think that you know what the Quran means by your Christian mind. Tell me, what is the word when he write it? 
Allah takes up no sons. What is the meaning where, of that? Where in the Quran it says Allah take no sons? Come on, you know damn well what sir no, we're you talking me. about. What, what? You know the ayat. Yes. You think you're intelligent. You're the scholar. You tell me. Okay, hold on. You are. You, me you are. You are. No you are Imam Al Mahdi. You do not know which verse you are talking about. Come now. Listen, listen. Quit saying my title. Who cares who I am? No, no. I, I'm I care. You no, no. You are a you grand. Wanted, you wanted someone to debate with you. Uh, you want to try to make someone look like a clown? Well, here I am. I oh, dare you to oh, try to make me look like a clown because oh, I'm about to flip the script on you oh, and make you look like an unintelligent right. donkey of a man that you are. Okay, which verse? You want to call our Muslim brothers by many foul names. Okay, which verse? And you want to accuse which, my grandfather which verse, of pedophile. Which I'm verse? Here to which my verse? Which for verse? He's a dead man. Which verse it says Allah take no sons? Look for it. You're, uh, you're you're supposed to be the scholar. You right? are the one you who mentioned it. You, you are, create the you are the one. You want to argue with Muslims. No, Muslim, you, you, Muslim, you are you Muslims are the one. You are. The shahad, the ayat, listen, don't, the verse, don't, so don't, don't shout, don't shout. There's no need to shout. No need to shout. Easy, easy. So you you, you mentioned to me. You mentioned to me. Uh, listen, you mentioned to me that Allah uh, uh, did not take a son. Which verse is that? Look for it. You got the computer right in front of you. You got the Quran right in front of you. I do not need to look for it. It's you who mentioned it. I want to see which verse you're talking about. Surah Maryam. Surah Maryam. Go, Surah Maryam. You know damn well what we're talking about. Okay, Surah Maryam. What verse? What verse? Come on. Which verse? I don't know. You tell me. You tell me. I don't know. You see, I don't know. Are you asking me? Are you asking me? Are you asking me? You're the one. No, stop, stop. You're the one that argues as a Christian that Muslims don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God based upon Quran. You're the one trying to say the Quran is false. Okay, I'm here Abdul, to defend the Muslims Abdul, and okay, say Abdul. you don't have education. Abdul. You think with your mind that you think you are smart. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 8. Read, 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 read this verse from me. Read this verse from me. Let's read that verse. Read this verse. Shut up. I'll give you the Potato. Read the verse from Read Imam Mahdi. Grandson of Khadija. Hey, potato, read this verse for me. It's in the screen. Call me a potato. Call me a potato to my face. You Watch how quickly your old man what, asks. What, you will, to what you will do? What you will don't do? Let, don't, if don't I kill you, hey, potato, listen, what don't call names. You are don't a, call you, people names. Okay, I'm don't sick keep, of that. Okay, okay listen. You want to do, listen, not, potato. You are a potato. Okay, read the verse. Read the verse. Read the verse. And disregards the. I have to shut you up. Are you breathing it? You are going to deliver a baby soon and your legs are open and the baby is kind of causing you pain? Stop shouting. Read the verse for me. Had Allah wished to take himself a son, he could have chosen whom he pleased out of those whom he does create. Now the mic is yours. How you explain the stupidity of your God? The mic is yours. Go ahead. 2,500 years ago, there was a group of people known as the Gnostic Christians who broke away from the truth and they came into the land of the dawn, bringing forth foul doctrines and fake gospels. <laughs> and they state that Jesus didn't die. Abdul, he got married to Mary Magdalene. And don't laugh. Let me finish first. Shut up. Answer my question. You are talking about things that have nothing to do with my topic. You mentioned that Allah don't have a son. Nobody can hear you, by the way. So stop talking, machine, talking machine. Had Allah wished to take himself a son, he could have chosen from who he please. What Allah is talking about? It means it is possible for Allah to take a son. And the son of Allah does not need to be even a divine he can be a person who is a created. The mic is yours. Don't talk like a machine so we can have a conversation together. I will not talk. I will wait for your answer. All right? The mic is yours. You don't want to keep muting the button. I'm trying to explain to your people why it states this in the Quran in the correct manner, the proper interpretation. And every Christian will know this because every Christian knows what the Gnostics brought forth. Shut up, you idiot. What Gnostic here? I'm asking you the logic of the verse. Allah, he said, it is possible for him to take a son. Let us say there's a group of people, as you said. This is even more stupid to say such a statement. 
because Allah He just confirmed that the Son of God do not need to be from God kind. It can be anyone He created. Do you see it? So how that refute those people? The mic is yours. Talking machine. With me, you won't be so boastful face to face with me. Trust what, me on that. What face to face with you? I can take an airplane and fly right to where you're at. What you will do so is I will watch your tongue with me, son. What you will do? Watch your tongue with me. What you will do? Do you know how old I am? What, how old are you? What you? I am older than you. What you will shut do? Your mouth what you? Sorry. Shut up, son of Mata. What you will do if you come to me? I I dare you to say it. Go ahead. He don't want to do it. He don't want to. No, no I want to know. Be a man and say what you will do. Be a man and say what you will do. Are you a man to say it? I dare you to say it. You, don't tell me you are so coward to say it even in the internet. What a potato you are. So now tell me what you would do. The mic is yours. Even, you don't even know the real meaning of Isa Sesel. Why well, you are changing the topic? <laughs> a second ago you said you want to come to me. A second after you don't want to talk about it. <laughs> potato. So now tell me. What kind of God he says, if you want to take a son, he will take it from his creation. Is that what son is about? The mic is yours. Of this nonsense shit, my son, I don't make money off the word of God. I think you're... A Stop using the word shit. Otherwise, I have to read the Quran from the beginning. Now answer me. Why Allah saying such a thing? If Allah wanted to have a son, he would choose someone from the one he created who is the one is talking here Allah so it is possible for Allah to take a son so what the problem with Muslims if Allah himself saying if I want to take a son I will take it from my creation in Christianity Jesus is not created he is born of God he exists before the world. In Islam, as you see, Allah have no problem to choose someone He created. Maybe it's a donkey. Maybe it's a horse. Maybe it's a cat. He did not say even it's a man or not. He said just a son. The son, all what he need to do or to be is one of his creation. And I will give you the mic. I would like to have a conversation with you without shouting and speaking so fast. Can you do that? So now explain the verse for me. Go ahead. Christians, take up a sword. Defend yourself. You called my grandfather foul names. I can't wait to come face to face with you. I'm Just get out of here. Obviously, you have a mental issue. This guy all this time was talking and nobody listening. <laughs> we wait for a Muslim. We got a, we got a person taking too much med medical. <laughs> oh boy, <clears throat> Rory, your mic. <clears throat> um, that's good that you dropped him. I think he was a troll. That's okay. Sometimes we need some entertainment. What we can do, and his uh, Khadija, is, uh, Khadija is his grandmother, so it's very normal to be a troll. <laughs> I thought, did, did Khadija convert to Islam or was she a Christian? Well, you know, based on what we see in the stories, you know, I believe Muhammad, he never met really Christians around him. Those are false uh, people, maybe uh, mostly it's a cult, you know, not Christians. Uh, if you remember the story of Muhammad when uh, the angel, he squeezed him a tree time. Yeah, so-called angel. Yeah, so what, what Khadija she did, she took him, look what I type in the, in the screen, I type Gharu Khara. <laughs> Khara in Arabic means shit. My mistake, sorry. <laughs> no different anyway. So, uh, uh, when, uh, when, uh, uh, when the angel appeared to Muhammad supposedly, Khadija, she took him to Waraq ibn Nufal. According to Muslim, Waraq ibn Nufal is a Christian priest. So if Khadija is not a believer, why she took him to Waraq? 
what exactly to Waraka? Uh, and Waraka is her supposedly uh, like an uncle or a cousin. So, uh, why Khadija she chosen to take Muhammad to Waraka? And Waraka is the one who explained to Muhammad what he is uh, experiencing. He told him that this is an angel and uh, you know uh, uh, you are chosen by Allah blah 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 so as you see Waraka ibn Nawfal here according to Muslims he become a Christian and he used to write a writing with Hebrew letters he would write from the gospel in Hebrew as much as Allah wished him to write by the way here it says in Hebrew in different hadith it says in Arabic in this hadith here it says yeah in in, in Hebrew and the other hadith it says in Arabic so what he was doing actually uh, uh, if we combine both Waraka was a translating from Hebrew into Arabic and Muhammad he took that book and he used it to add verses in the Quran All right, let's see hello, what you want to say. Go ahead, hello. Hi, Christian friends, you know. Uh, How are you? I'm a fan of your channel. All and, right. Uh, you know, I was uh, born Muslim. I was made a Hafiz as well uh, in the UK. All right. And so, just, you know, I've been questioning things in religion and... Uh, yeah, but, but why you decide to leave Islam? You know, um, Islam had many good things, like you know, uh, you know. It's just uh, you know, like from what I've seen, yeah, it's just they look very backwards. Like so, for example. But isn't this the good thing about it? I just, I, I just said to you, Islam had many, many good things, which is the backward. Like you know, you can have sex with your children. You know, uh, you can lie to your wife. Uh, the wife can lie to you. Yeah. Uh, you can lie to your friends. Uh, you know, Islam encourages hypocrisy. Uh, you do not need to be a Muslim by faith, but you can say I'm a Muslim. Just say Shahada. Uh, if you say Bismillah wa bihamdihi a hundred times, all your sin will be forgiven, even if it's more than the form of the ocean. You are, you know, you left all of this. All of this. Yeah, and also <laughs> like some of the things which, like for example, it says in the Quran that you can hate your wife. So I think that kind of teaching goes in Islamic households, like so for example, um, since this, this page is anonymous, I can say that uh, like my dad used to hit my mom, but I was I was really young, so I couldn't do much, but now when I'm older, uh, you know, it's just like such a taboo that you, you can't really talk about it in your family. You know? Yeah, Muhammad, he said, no, no man should be questioned why he is beating his wife, right? And that is telling you that this is a religion made for the man by the man. It cannot be from God. Yeah. I'll be honest, he actually tried to strangle her, you know. It's, it's been bothering me and I can't really say. The thing I've noticed, yeah, you can't think critically in Islam. And Muslim people don't think critically, like, um, what do you say, like, um, consider the teachings and uh, I don't know whatever yeah I can see the hadith which you which you say yeah you know uh, the normal Muslims yeah. don't know about this you see yeah. even if you are a Muslim who do not know but you look at Islam and you try to find the source of what they are doing like your dad and I'm sorry to hear about your mom being struggling with your dad and he is using yeah. violence with her and, and the thing is you know Muslim women you know when these things happen thing is like you know you see like in Muslim countries like all the divorce rates are so low and uh, what do you say all oh, there are families but they don't actually know the the story which is going on because they're like they they want to leave their husbands but they're like you they can't divorce uh, easily and uh, you know there'll be shame upon the family all this tribal culture it's, it's not only that how they will sort of support them I remember when I was a kid there was a guy his name is Muhammad Muhammad Ali 
and he. Oh, it's uh, Mike is Muhammad as well, you know. It's oh yeah. <laughs> okay. He is a bit. He's a Bedouin guy, and he was with me in school. So I, he did oh, not. He, he did not come yeah. to school. So I went to his house actually to check on him, and I said, "Hey, you know, you're not coming to school. What's up?" He said, "Oh, my dad. He divorced my mom, and we do not know what to do." She need to find a place, you know, her parents, they passed away a long time ago. She's an old woman. So imagine he divorced her and when they get married, they wrote like, you know, like, you know, the, the, uh, 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 the dowry he, he have to pay her when he divorced her. Right. So, yeah, so they wrote her, it, uh, the money he wrote at that time, he married her almost 50 years ago. She's very old, you know, now. And um, we, we are like, you know, uh, a teenager at that time, high school. So uh, he said to me, the money, he said, uh, he said, and the money he, he will give her, which is in the contract, is not even good to buy a TV now. At that time, it was good money, you know. But now, the money is not even good to buy a TV. So what she can do with this money? And we do not know what to do, so I'm not going to, to school. So... This is how horrible the life of Muslim women. She served the man or her life like a slave. She make him babies. She uh, no, clean just, his you know, clothes. Like, I see like people like you know uh, Andrew Tate and all of these famous figures. They've lived like forty years of their their lives as atheists and you know had all of their fun and now they're like oh yeah Islam is good, but you know you should actually. But nothing changed. And like, Andrew Tate is still is, a, is no he's still a pimp. He's still his website is functioning. His uh, his pimp house is working. Nothing changed. <laughs> Nothing changed. Yeah. So if, if you can mute YouTube, if, if you can mute YouTube, because my voice is coming back uh, to me, please. If you are in YouTube or Ramble, mute it. I'm on Discord. Should should I mute? I mute you mute YouTube or close YouTube because the voice is coming down. It coming back to me. Uh, I'm not sure it's coming from uh, YouTube or Ram, but I don't know where are you now. Uh, I'm actually on Discord. I Only? Oh, because I, I hear like myself yeah, coming no. back. It's okay. All right. Yeah. So those people did not change uh, anything. I, they, I they, they still actually now uh, under Tate, he is uh, the, the, the British authority. They want, they want, they, they issue an arrest against him because there's a new evidence coming yeah. against him and they want him to be sent to to the uk and uh, you know uh, i mean the guy he have uh, uh, islam is appealing for many especially if you are a criminal if you are a, 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 a low class person if you are a pimp uh, but by the way you know that there is a verse in the quran that says okay to be a pimp right what yeah no way yeah actually there's a video made by oh fifi uh, farid he have a video of him speaking to three Muslims, and they agree. The Quran says it's okay to be a pimp. You can watch it. Uh, if you go to the Quran, so like, uh, wow, you know, that's dead. what I'm saying. Yeah, Muslims like for fifteen hundred years. So, uh, and that's also what I believe is that so like Islam was spread by the sword and like forcefulness because people didn't have the chance to contemplate like. Uh, about the book that was you know being revealed to them it was just like they come to their lands and uh, say either you pay the jizya or you know stay in humiliation and just die or accept islam so it's uh, jizya is only for jews and christians yeah no but that's what i'm saying so like i'm like british pakistani and like so islam came to pakistan um, i don't know a few thousand years back and, um, yeah, so Pakistan only became a nation in 1948. Oh, sorry, India, India, you could say. Yeah, at that time it was India, anyway. India and Bangladesh, all, all of those they used to be India, and then they were divided, you know, because Muslims they don't want to live with the Hindus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but so oh, like our in the family they say oh it was the British who did that and blah blah blah. Like is that okay? Is that okay if I read just, something? You read what? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Um, hold on. Um, uh, Colossians three nineteen. Husbands love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Yeah, there's a we cannot compare between the the Bible and the teaching of the Quran. 
Uh, Islam is based on fear. The fear starts inside the family. Terrorism. The first terrorism starts inside the house. The man, he beat his wife. The wife beat the babies. And then the family, all of it, everybody beat everybody in the society. The, it's, uh, the Islamic society is based on big fish and small fish. The big fish eat the small fish. And there's no justice. You know, even though the Muslim, they say to you, there's justice. Go and see how Muslims, they kill each other always. Uh, who is going to practice justice when they are the one, like Aisha, she took an army to kill Ali and his kids and his family. Is Aisha a good woman? Obviously, she is a gang member. Muhammad, his, he killed many. Ali, he killed many. Uh, uh, the Caliphate Uthman, he was killed. They took the hair from his beard. They, you know, they, 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 they drag him in the ground like a dog. So, the, in order to be, to say, to claim that Islam brought something good to you, how come all Muslims, since Muhammad time, they were slaughtering each other? Imagine, if we read in the Bible that Paul, he killed John, and John, he killed Peter, and Peter, he chopped the head of, of Mark, and Mark, he chopped the head of etc. So, then you need to ask yourself, what kind of disciple Jesus he have? Those are the disciples of Muhammad. They are chopping the head of each other. Uh, that, I mean, that's what I see in our Muslim communities. Like they lack patience, and uh, so as I told you, uh, I'm also a Hafiz. If you know about that, yeah, you recite. You mean you recite the Quran? Quran? So you recite, you know the Quran by heart, all of it. Yeah, I was I was made to do that. Actually, mm. like I had good memory, and then my parents were like, "Okay, just you know, let him memorize memorize the Quran, which has what, no use." What was what was, to what was your favorite verse to recite? What was your favorite verse? Uh, you know, as I told you, um, so like for example, uh, so we are Pakistani and thing is we focus more on memorization instead of like uh, yeah. contemplating yeah and you don't know what you are reading is, yeah uh, yeah yeah i mean you hello brother yeah hi um yeah i'm glad you came out of islam because that religion is not is meant to be for Muhammad's people, apparently. Yeah. No, and that's but what no I'm saying, should, you know. And no one should become a like, Muslim. Uh, some of my family, like, they even live in uh, Qatar and Saudi. And so they're like, you know, they're considered as second-class citizens. Like, basically, they're Arabs. They're, what do you say, the Arab Muslims. They're, like, at the top of the hierarchy. And they just consider, like, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, or whatever to be, you know. It's like... Yeah, they are they are racist. Always the Arab, they are racist, and the Arab they are racist against each other too. Like you know, uh, uh, yeah. the the the, the in, in, in Kuwait. Like, in, in Kuwait, do you know what they call the daughter of Muhammad? Uh -huh. they, no, they give the name of the daughter of Muhammad to their flip flap. You know, yeah. They're flip flap. So, like so yeah, the, yeah, yeah. No, uh, uh, as a nuba, they call it a nuba. So the 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 Muslim themselves, they are very racist against each other. Depends where are you from. Yeah. The Saudi look down at the Qatari. The Qatari look down at the Bahrain. The Bahrain look down in Bahrain because the Muslim Sunni, they are a small minority between the Shia. So what they do, they bring Muslim Sunni from Pakistan. And they give them citizenship, so they can balance the number of the Shia. Otherwise, the Shia they will take over. And this is why the Saudi they made a bridge between Saudi Arabia and Bahrain in order to prevent Iran taking over because the Shia are majority. Yeah, but we know that uh, Arab always are. You know, if you are an Egyptian, you are not an Arab. So the Arab they look down at you. Uh, and you, even your salary, like if an yeah. Egyptian person who works in Saudi saying, Arabia, you know, like, go ahead. Yeah, I was saying that luckily I was like a part of the Western culture. You could say I was born here, but I see many people, yeah, like from the Muslim continent, they always try to flock into the Western countries. I've even like heard a, uh, 
a lot of cases here they declare themselves as Christians or you know like uh, people of other religion to claim asylum in these countries that we're being oppressed but in fact you know they are just Muslim but they're just trying to settle in these countries mm. I'm just saying like if Muslim countries are so good and you know Islam is the best why don't they settle over there and um, as you even see like Palestine you have nearly like 50,000 people have been killed so if you care like so much about the Muslim Ummah and everything why has no one you know like none of their leaders spoken up truly about it or uh, sent troops to fight the Israeli uh, military or something you know and uh, it just shocks me like I don't know uh, you know the, the numbers of people who die in uh, Gaza is fake numbers because those are given by Hamas anyway uh, let us say there are a hundred thousand but why we don't look around us and see who killed so-called Palestinian in in Middle East the King of Jordan go right now and search for something called the black black September black September the King of Jordan yeah uh, the King of Jordan he slaughtered tens of thousands of uh, so-called Palestinians in Jordan uh, what about we go to Hezbollah and the Shia in Lebanon they surrounded the the camps of uh, the settlement of the Palestinian in, in Lebanon for almost three years and they forbid them from having water food drink medicine to the point when when a person he die they even eat him this is how bad it become this is the act of the Shia in Lebanon and now Hezbollah they claim that they are standing with Gaza what about we check what happened with the Palestinian in Egypt Egypt right now as we speak they are building three walls next yeah. to Gaza wall because they don't want a single person from Gaza to come to their land and uh, the, 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 the Egyptian army they bombed all that area and they killed hundreds of hundreds of Hamas members in their side why because Hamas they are the Muslim Brotherhood and the Muslim Brotherhood they are a threat to Egypt so in Egypt they make a speech against Israel but in reality they hate them to death and they are so happy to see Israel doing what they are doing same as Saudi Arabia you see all those Arab who they claim they stand against yeah. Israel with Gaza the reality is the opposite all of them they are praying in their heart that not a single one of them will survive the Emirati the Bahrain the Qatar the Saudi every single one of them nobody will give them even a visa so this is why the you know the Arab are very well known in their hypocrisy <coughs> nobody like them and there is a reason there's a reason you know always they betray their neighbors they are not trustworthy as an example in Kuwait those Palestinian they are not Palestinian by the way but they call them Palestinian now they been given all the rights in Kuwait no one more day. <laughs> jobs good jobs good salary nice villas they live like kings nobody can be kicked out of, of Kuwait they even get salary even if they have no job just because they are Palestinians free education free insurance, free health insurance, free school insurance. for their family. And then when Saddam Hussein, he attacked Kuwait, what the Palestinian did? They joined Saddam Hussein against the Kuwaiti. And then when the Kuwaiti got their country back, they kicked every single Palestinian out. And that's why then Jordan almost got bankrupt because Jordan had more than 75% Palestinians. And this is the state of Palestine. If we want to make it, you know, they are asking for a state for the Palestinian. Here we go, Jordan. It is more than 75% of the population is Palestinian. So you want to have a state for them? Here we go. They have Jordan is many times bigger than Israel. And it's empty. This war is not about land. This war is about religion. And the Arab themselves, they don't want those Palestinian. In fact, the king of Jordan, he do not know what to do with them. That's why he made his son, he forced his son, uh, sorry, he forced him, uh, uh, the, king, the, the previous king of Jordan, Abdullah, uh, uh, Hussein, sorry, he forced his son to marry a Palestinian woman so the Palestinian will not kill the king of Jordan right now and take over the government. So he took women from them, so his son now will be mixed, so they, the Palestinian, they will not revolt against him, but that will not stay for long. At the end, I believe in 20 years from now the Palestinian they will take control of all of Jordan and Jordan will be totally controlled by Palestinian because they are the majority those they call them Jordanian are very small in number uh, and it's just a matter of time 
Jordan will be uh, the state of Palestine. And you will see, time will come. And you will see that Jordan name will change and we became Palestine. And this is what will happen. We will see. Here's the thing, here's the thing right? right. Um, Muslims always complain about the Israel destroying Palestine and it's hypocrisy because Arabs are doing it to them. And not only that, Ali Dawa said that the the what brought him to Islam was a false claim of scientific miracles, right? Mm. I, uh, I met him, you know. I met him personally. Why doesn't why shouldn't his faith be shaken yet the potato is still on still in Islam? Why didn't he leave it? Yeah, you know, he's making uh, uh, good money from it. He just bought a house from the from Islam. <laughs> what leave it? What he will do for a living? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> That's a great business, you know. So, like, they are making a lot of money from this garbage, you know. So, this is not uh, this. This is this has become their career. Uh, what what uh, what Muhammad Hijab, what Muhammad Hijabi do for a living now? He go and make give lecture. Suddenly, he became a sheikh. <laughs> Did you, did you know Muhammad actually bribed people to come to Islam or come to Quran 960? Yeah, yeah. He paid the money to convert. But then, look what Muhammad, what he did. Actually, that action uh, was the reason for Islam to collapse as a gang. Because when Muhammad, he paid them money to those family, uh, those family are the same ones who they killed the family of Muhammad. So the stupid Muhammad, he found this gang. He knew they are aggressive, they are they are criminals. He, he knew he cannot fight them, they will kill him. So he offered them money if they convert, money and position. And they accept. But later, those people, they destroyed Islam. And they killed the family of Muhammad. Yes, they spread Islam as a religion, but they spread their own Islam as a religion, and they become the kings, and they killed everyone from the family of Muhammad who dare to question their authority. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, you know, it's like, and I'll tell you one thing more. Yeah, it's, it's really hard for me to speak because. In my household, like everyone's Muslim, so if I, you know, they're aggressive, anyways, you know, Muslims are always aggressive. So if I'm saying anything, you know, critical about Muslims, they're gonna like say, "Oh, what are you saying?" Blah blah blah. And you know, Muslims they are aggressive when they are majority. When they are not, they are potatoes. You know, like uh, we as and as a Christian in the Middle East, <clears throat> if I go to an area. Where the majority are, yeah. are Muslims, every one of them is a lion. But when they come to a Christian yeah. area, they are cats. You know? So mm -hmm. we know them. You know, like now, Hamas, they attack Israel. They attack who? They attack women, children, people who they were asleep in their beds. When the real army came, they are they are trying their best to cease fire. So what happened to the lions? Would they want jihad? Okay, I mean, you want jihad. Here we go, jihad is coming to you. Isn't this what they want? War with the Jews? Okay, you started the war. Let's have no, war. The issue, yeah, but the issue of like Palestine and Israel is a bit more complicated, you know, because I, I studied the history. Yes, Jews used to live here, but since many empires came and everything no 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 you see doesn't matter no. doesn't matter how many empire this is the land of the jews the jews they were captured twice uh, and there's no palestinian yeah. are, are exist there's no palestinian you see the when when the when the assyrian uh, they came and they capture whoever live in the holy land they did not capture only the jews they captured the jews and the real palestinians when the jews were released from their captivities, 
they did not release the Assyrian, they did not release the Palestinian. The Palestinian never come back. So this is the land of the Jews. If the if somebody took them away by by sword, that does not make it not their land. And if we go to, in time, we are talking about what? It, long before even Moses. So even the Quran says that this is the holy land assigned to, to you Jews in the Quran. So this is yeah. not this is not a land many empire was and because it doesn't matter who, who empire is even in the time of Jesus when the Roman they were in the authority still the Jews are there and we know the story about how the rabbi they took Jesus to the court and they judge him for he claimed to be the son of God and he claimed to be God so the Jews still they have authority and the court is the court of the Jews and the Roman they are the one who is in the top to rule but yet the rulers, they take the authority of the Jews. They give them their, like, let us say, local and independent in measuring their religion, uh, law of religion, etc. As long as they pay their tax to Caesar, Caesar has nothing to do with them. As simple as that. So the Jews are there, and there is no Palestinian. The word Palestine, you know what the what, what word Palestine means? <clears throat> Who knows? No, tell us. Palestinian mean a migrant, a foreigner. So when even they call themselves Palestinian, they accept to call themselves foreigners. So when when an idiot he says I am a Palestinian, which is it? in the Hebrew, Palestinians, Palestinian. This is this is the Arabic word we say Palestine. We don't we don't say Palestine. Like in English, you say Palestine, but in, in reality, in Arabic, you say Palestine, which is coming from the Hebrew. Uh, Palestine is somebody, he is a migrant, he is a foreigner, which means he is not from this land. <laughs> this is their name, they are they are migrants, they are foreigners. So why, why do you want to call them foreigners if they are from the land? They, they are called foreigners because they are foreigners. However, those who live now in Gaza, they are not those Palestinians. They have nothing to do. Those are collection of Bedouin from the desert of Sinai, from Arabia, from many places. That's why each one of them look different. You will see one of them is blonde. The other one, he have a curly hair. The other one, he have dark skin. The other one, he is so white. The other one, they don't even have, they, they, don't, they, they don't have any harmony in their look. Why? Because they are not one nation. The Jews, they went and they scattered around the world. This is why when they came back, there's the one he is dark in skin, there's the one he's white, because they are mixed. But those Palestinians, if why they oh, are the people you used to say Yeah, the people used to say like Jews used to spread corruption along the land, so that's why they were kicked out of every country they went to. My friend. The Jews, they spread corruption, corruption, as they say, right? But uh, if you go yeah. in the Middle East, you will never find a corrupt country in the world more than Middle Eastern. It doesn't matter who, who they are. We have, we have false, we have corrupt judges, police, government, uh, uh, the prince or the king or the president. Uh, we have people disappear. You say one word in Facebook about the king, you disappear, you and your family. The crown prince, he chopped the guy in Turkey. You remember? They chop in pieces. You know, shish kebab. So, what corruption? You go to you go to Israel now. Uh, uh, Netanyahu himself but is... We're talking about facts. Like, we don't care. Like, okay, the Arabs are like this. We're talking about Jews. Like, I know, I know. Corruption. My friend, and that's why they were nobody... There is this uh, corruption is exists everywhere. And if a Jew, he spread corruption... Well, obviously, in order to spread corruption, people around him have to be corrupt too. If I go to you to bribe you, I'm spreading corruption, but in order to spread it, you have to accept my bribe, correct? Yeah. Well, that means you are corrupt too. So why we blame the Jews? So we remember only from the Jews, the one who is supposedly bad, but we have a million of us, they are bad. Why you wouldn't see them? Because simply we have to discriminate the Jews. We have to blame the Jews. We have to blame somebody. And usually in society they blame the minority. Because the minority are the easy target. The soft skin. 
Nobody dare to blame the one who is scary. In any society, like if you if you do something, let us say wrong. If you are rich, powerful, the police close their eyes. The FBI didn't see you. They don't notice it. Like here we go. The yeah, hun no, hun Hunter Biden, the example. Hunter Biden is a son of president. They have tons of evidence that he is corrupt and he took a bribe. And then now he's free. If the same thing happened to a normal American citizen, what would happen to him? He would be in jail from a long time ago. So, corruption is, exists everywhere. And there is people who they are protected. Well, that's a fact about the Jews, you know. I mean, no, no, this is not true. This is not true. There is, there, is, there, is, there, is, there is bad and good people everywhere. There is bad people everywhere. And don't think about it this way. Uh, did you did you ever work with the Jews? I'll be honest, no. Okay, so how you know? Because they say to no, you. Because I was studying history, and like people used to say, they introduced, uh, you know, the interest system in the countries. They that's 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 face. false, my friend. But this is false. When when the European, the church was in in control, they forbid anyone who is a Christian to do banking because there is interest is involved it's forbidden and because the jews they've been given their own law which mean they are not under the law of the church so the jews they were free to start banking but if we say that banking is corruption that means all countries in the world they are corrupt because every country in the world have banking and they have interest including muslim countries and what they do in muslim countries they, they give a different name <laughs> Halal interest, but it's interest. Yeah, Muslims say the interest of riba, whatever they call it, is haram in Islam, but yet they still do extortion. They change the name in Islam, they change the name of things. As an example, in Islam, fornication is haram, but in reality, fornication is a practice. Muhammad allow muta marriage. Muhammad, he have, he, uh, you know, here we go in front of you. It says that prostitution, force not your girls to prostitution if they choose a chastity. But if they choose not, Allah is all merciful. Quran, chapter 24, verse number 33. It's an official that you can hire a prostitute. It's official that you can rent a woman. Is, isn't this a corruption? When a man, he says, you can have sex with a child. Isn't this, this is the most ugly corruption? So if a Jew, he like money, what well, a Jew is not going to go after your child, at least. And he will not take your money unless you, 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 know, you, deci you decide to do business with him. In the top of that, if you look around you, you will find everyone, every Muslim, when he have a case in the West, they hire a Jewish lawyer. So if they are corrupt and they are bad, why you hire a Jewish lawyer? You hire somebody. Is, you hire somebody. Is, is the trustworthy. Here's the thing, you know, chapter 532. Sorry? You know, chapter 532 of the Quran. Did you know us from the, the, did you know us from the Talmud? Yeah, but we don't want to change topic now. Let us focus here. Muhammad, the, 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 yeah. the idea, the idea of uh, blaming the Jews, it exists in many society, including, including Christian society. Not because the Jews are bad. There is for sure there's bad Jews, there's bad Christians. You know, Andrew Tate, he is not a Jew. Is he? Uh -huh. He is he's a very famous pimp. He has tons of videos speaking how he lure women. So how come nobody see him? Because he's not a Jew. But if he's a Jew, we will make a story about it. Ah, oh, he's a Jew. What do you expect, man? Jews are bad, you know. So so there's the uh, and Muhammad from the beginning of Islam. He made everyone believe that there's two things to blame for anything bad happening, women and Jews. Women and Jews. If, if there is no Jews, no, uh, 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 read with you carefully, he, the Prophet of Allah said, had is it not been for Bani Israel, which means children of Israel, meat would not have gone bad. And it had not been for Eve, a woman would not, would never, you know, act unfaithfully or betray her husband. 
So Muhammad, he claimed there's two sources of evil in the world. Jews and women. Yet Muhammad, he have tons of them. <laughs> he have tons of women in his house. Hey, listen, Christian Prince, man, this is just... Wow, the knowledge you're giving me, man, is just... It's, it's so hidden from the Muslim community, you know? Yeah, we need to be careful, you see? Like when I say, uh, me, myself, I, I blame Muslims for every corruption, not the Jews. But when I say Muslim, I don't I mean someone his name is Muhammad. No, I say a Muslim he followed truly Muhammad. A Muslim he followed Muhammad, he believe he can lie to me. That is a corruption. He believe he can have sex with his children. This is a corruption. He believe that he can do muta. This is a corruption. He believe that he can beat his wife. This is corruption. Because you corrupt your family, you know, you are using violence to force yourself on a woman that will bring rape. Which means the man he can rape his wife. What if the wife she don't want to sleep with the, with the husband? Beat her, rape her. This is corruption. So Islam is the religion of corruption. Muhammad he legalized every evil act, and yet the Muslim they claim that they are against corruption, but reality is the opposite. Muhammad himself. Yeah, and also I see uh, just all these, as I told you, like Muslim people from. Uh, wherever like Syria, Pakistan, India, they don't want to go to like uh, countries like Qatar, UAE. They want to go to America. Oh, absolutely, so because Europe, because the, yeah. because there they will be they, there they will be treated like like dogs. <laughs> In Europe, they will be treated like a human. Yet they claim that Europe country European are are pagans and they are bad and they are infidels and they are corrupt and Islam is good, but when they want to live. They live between those who they claim that they are corrupt. Why? Because Muslims are hypocrite. Why you want to go and live between with people who they are bad? You know? Why you don't live in Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia will not even work on one of them. They will not. They are smarter than the stupid European. Europeans are stupid. They are just destroying themselves. Sooner or later, Europe will be zero European. The European themselves, they have to find a country to go to. <laughs> All right, my friend. Thank you very All much, right. both of you, for joining. All right, Roy. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Do we have any Muhammad would like to join us? And you know, uh, uh, the, the funny thing about Muhammad, he says stupid things. If there is no Eve, no yeah. woman betray her husband. So according to Muhammad, he believed in original sin because this is what original sin is. Even Adam, they commit sin. So now he is saying that sin of Eve transformed into the sin of every Eve. I thought Muhammad is against original sin. <laughs> but I think in Christianity, it's also written here yeah, like Eve made Adam eat the fruit or something like that. No problem, but still Adam, he commits sin because he, why he agreed. <laughs> so. Uh, Satan he deceived uh, Eve, Eve deceived her husband, uh, they, both they are deceived, and both of them they are kicked from, he from heaven, but as you see, Muhammad blaming only Eve. Yes, I'm a Christian prince, like, I told you my story, yeah, I said, well, what's the solution you give to me on this? My elder brother, he's also like an extreme Islamist, my family, no, Let your brother come and speak to me. Let's see what he can do. Maybe we can help him to leave Islam. Uh, the thing is, you know, he rejects logic, so he just follows. No problem. We can use his logic. No, don't worry about it. I always use Muslim logic, which is stupid logic to beat their logic. You see, when you debate a Muslim, a Muslim yeah. like you yourself, you are born in a Muslim family. In the moment when you are a Muslim, yeah. I had to be. yeah in the moment you are a Muslim, in that moment when you're still a believer, you are stupid. And I'm not I'm not shy to say that to yeah. you. When you are a Muslim, you are stupid. So I have to oh, use I you. you. So I have to use your stupid logic to fight your stupidity. It's like you know somebody he he had he he just been bitten by by a, by a snake. So how the, what the doctors they do? They use anti poison made from the same poison. 
they use the same snake poison to fight your your bite and the same like when we take a vaccine what we do we, we they give you a virus the same virus which is going supposedly to kill you but this virus is a treated so a muslim he come to debate me he come to me with his stupid logic then I not I should not use my logic because that would be stupid of me because now I am stupid speaking to someone is stupid you don't speak to someone is stupid in a smart language you have to go down to his level speak to him in a stupid way so the stupid him can understand the stupid language I'm saying to him so use his logic against him see what he say listen to him carefully and then send him back what he just said to you and then you will see how badly he will be defeated in the other day who remember guys the lady who left she left islam with her name i forgot she brought me her brother but obviously her brother he came to show her that this guy is not telling the truth and she said her brother he is very knowledgeable in islam after 30 minutes the guy he was defeated horribly and he had nothing to say and he just said, okay, I have to go, like, you know, you don't want to answer? No, I don't know what to answer, I'm not. And he started keep repeating, he don't, I don't have, strong, I don't have a lot of knowledge. But he was telling his sister that he is so strong in knowledge. But the second he's talking to me, it turned to be his knowledge is zero. So you need to use their stupid logic against them. Don't use your logic. Like once I was sitting with two Egyptian Muslims and we were having uh, uh, like a lunch. Where are you from exactly? I don't mention where I'm from. So the Egyptian guy, two of them, one is old, older, and the other one is younger. The younger, he started, he said to me, you, how you Christian believe that Jesus is son of God? And you know, the, the, uh, the older man, he told him, don't go there. Let us not open this topic, please. Uh, the guy he said, "Why you know you are talking?" And I said to him, "It's okay, it's okay, no problem." So he said to me, "I said I'm listening." He said, "But don't you think that Jesus, if he is a son of God, his father will save him?" I said, "That's a good point. Truly, I mean, if Jesus is a son of God, I mean, his father will save him." Oh, you are right. The guy get excited by the way when I said that to him. He said, "Oh, I hit the nerve." And now he's going to agree with me because I'm sound like I agreed with him. Then I said to him, well, you know what? I think you are right. Based on what you said, Jesus is the son of God in Islam. Because in Islam, Allah saved him. The second I said that to him, he said, no, 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 no. I do not mean that. I said, no, you said to me, if Jesus is the son of God, his father will save him. Well, this is what happened in Islam. Now he don't want his logic no more. I don't mean that. You know, he said, this is what you said to me. And the other guy, the old guy, he said, he said, see, I told you, don't talk to him. I know what this guy would taste to you. I know him. He is, he, he, you are no match. I am no match to him. I told you, don't open the topic. Here we go, deal with it. Answer him, answer him. Yeah, you said that to him. Even the guy, the other guy is a Muslim, he said to him, you said that to him, answer him. He will go, if he is the son of God, then his father will save him. Hey, in our religion, Allah, he saved Jesus. How you can solve it now? So you, you need to use the stupid Muslim logic in order to defeat their stupidity. But you know the main issue in my life is just I want to talk to my dad about what he did. But the thing is, you know, everyone has moved on. But I, as a logical person, I cannot move on from someone who did some things to my mother. You know, even though she has moved on because she's like blinded by Islam and stuff, and so like, oh, I can't leave my husband, or you know, whatever. I can't divorce him. You know, I have to do it for my kids and everything. I mean. You know, it, it just doesn't make sense, so... Um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to make a better life for myself, but it's just... You see, bad, you know, thing bad, is, bad men behaving badly with wives, it can happen everywhere. It can be even a Christian person beating his wife. But obviously, no, this, you. Yeah, but, this is, but this is, there's a huge difference between 
someone is is doing his God teaching and someone doing his the, the Satan teaching. So a Christian man, he cannot justify beating his wife in any way, any mean. He is not being a Christian and he will be punished for that. But a Muslim man, he can justify, even he do not need to justify. Muhammad says, no man shall be asked why he is beating his wife. So the difference is, there is men who they are idiots. I, I believe strongly that men who beat their women, yeah. they are the coward ones, not, not real men. A coward man, yeah. who everybody beat him out in the road, he go inside, who is the only, there is only one person he can beat and don't beat him back, is the wife. In the street, he is a potato, everybody ride on him, everybody beat him, everybody insult him, and he don't dare to retaliate. Yeah. So what he do? He go to the weak one. Who is that? His son, his daughter, his wife. Those are the ones I can beat, and they will not beat me back. So I believe it strongly. Yeah, that's what my dad used to do as well. yeah, I believe it strongly that the act of beating a wife is a coward. You know, let us say for the sake of uh, whatever, your wife is really a, a bad woman. She is, a, you know, she's a crazy. Divorce her. I mean, you do not need to be. She do not need to beat you. You do not need to beat her. You do not need to end in jail, commit a crime. She is so bad. Leave her. The earth is big. There's a lot of women. This man is bad. Leave him. Nobody forces you to stay with someone. But, you know, women usually in the Middle East or in Islamic countries, because they cannot support themselves. So they have to stay in a house. They say to themselves, a man who beat me better than being homeless. That's all. But if a woman who live in a society... abused me as well. Because he knew at the end of the day, like I was living under his house, so yeah. But but but, but now you live. But now you believe. Day, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> I'm like, what does the praying do? Yeah, he prayed to uh, to God, but he he beat his wife. He's a good man, you know. Yeah, his God told him that this is what happened when you are a Muslim. All right. Well, thank you, my friend, for joining us for, for tonight. I appreciate you, right, and uh, you. Uh, we pray for you. And uh, if you like to you can invite your brother to join and uh, talk to me, I will be happy to talk to him. All right? Oh, he's not going to. I know that. He's tell him, challenge him. Tell him, do you dare? Possibility. Yeah. Tell him, do you dare to debate this guy? Do you? If you say no, say to him, I potato. Know, no, it's like you're not banging your head on a wall, like. Okay, tell him this, Christian Prince. He said to me to tell you that you are a potato if you don't debate him. All right? <laughs> All right, brother. Take care. God bless you. Take care, brother. All right. Bye. Do we have any Muslim who would like to join us? May they, may they last call. L remember carefully that if you don't, if you join us, we are going to give you not baklava, not Bitcoin, we are going to give you a corner lot in the heaven of Allah. As Muhammad, he promised a Muslim guy, he took his farm in exchange for corner lot in heaven. Hey guys, if there's any one of you, he have a farm in a nice place in Hawaii maybe, and he like to exchange, exchange it with me for a corner lot in heaven. Listen, I will give you a corner lot in heaven this is the corner lot where all the young girls walk. Six years, seven years, five years. The pretty ladies you like, the size you like, the age you like. Huh? Corner lot. Give me your farm. You know, like what happened with Abu Dahdah. Muhammad, he told the guy, if you give me your farm, I will give you a corner lot in heaven. The stupid Abdul, he went to his wife, he says, Happy, 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 we got a corner lot in heaven. <laughs> I gave Muhammad my farm. <laughs> what a scam. You know, every time there is a scammers. And scammers, they have many names. They are exist always. Sometimes scammers, they come to you in the name of God. Sometimes they come to you in the name of government. 
Sometimes they come to you, they are from the bank calling you. Sometimes they are the cable guy. They go to your room, the bedroom, so they can steal your jewelries. So always there is somebody who use a fake uniform to fool you. And Muhammad is no different. He fooled those poor people, giving them false promises for false heaven. That is Islam. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to our Patreon so you can receive a notification when we go live. We go live in Ramble, YouTube, and Discord. And most of the time actually in Ramble. So join us in Patreon so you will be informed and you will be able to just click at the link and be with us. I'm not going to keep you longer. Uh, as we see, we have many Muslims left Islam and we are grateful to see them, you know, sharing the truth about Islam and sharing their own experience. And we hope soon we will have more Muslims leaving the garbage of Muhammad. You see, even the word garbage doesn't fit with Islam because garbage can be useful. Garbage, you can recycle plastic. You can recycle metal. Even garbage, which is food, you can make compost. Make it fertilizer for your garden. But what is the benefit of Islam? Muhammad, he found where the sun set. He found it sitting in a spring of boiling water. And actually, I'm showing you that in Ramble and YouTube right now. This is where I found the sunset. But the difference is, according to Muhammad, it was a spring of water. And that water is boiling. But reality is, anytime we speak about Muhammad, we make him boil. And we crush him like an egg. And then we find that this egg is rotten, for it is damaged and bad and is smelly and ugly. There is no good in Islam. There is no good in religion teaching you to beat your wife and marry children, child abuse. There is no good in religion teach you you can lie to your wife and the wife lie to her husband. There is no good in religion that says you can rent a woman for one night to stand. There is no good in religion use violence with anyone who oppose. There is no good in religion which will promise you women and sex slaves in heaven. There is no good in such an evil, bad cult. The only good can be found with the true good God, and that is the Messiah. He said, I am the good shepherd. I am the light. I am the resurrection. I am the truth. I am the way. The Messiah did not only say words, but he did act. He healed the leper. He made the blind see. He resurrected the dead. The Quran says he created from the mother bird. The Bible confirmed that everything created by him and for him. Jesus is not someone who is making a speech on the mount, saying, I am, I am, I am. He is the living God, yes, but he did what the living God do. For talk is cheap. I can make a good speech, but I cannot resurrect you from death. I can make a very good speech, but I cannot heal the leper. I cannot even heal myself. Muhammad, he died by poison. Muhammad was so sick, he could not heal himself. Allah could not heal him. But Jesus can. So if you want to know why I believe in Jesus, I have a billion reasons to believe in him and trillion ones to reject Muhammad. And I say to you, if a fool man like Muhammad can fool you, how foolish are you? This is your brother Christian Prince, who is serving you humbly for today. I hope to see you soon tomorrow, if I could. God bless you, and see you soon again in Discord, Rumble, and maybe in YouTube. Take care. Bye-bye.